FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today's May 10th, 2017. Well, the French election results are in. Did the good guys win or were there no good guys? Andrew Hoffman is with us now in somewhat modified form. Andy, uh, good morning. Hope you're feeling okay. Yes, thank you, Kerry. I, I, uh, I'm on a lot of uh, cough medicines because I have pneumonia right now, so I'm going to try to avoid having a coughing attack. But yes, as for the French election, uh, the article I wrote on Monday, which is eight pages long, a must read, was called, Who's Better for Precious Metals, Macron or Le Pen? And obviously the short term answer would be Le Pen. But the fact is, the, the reason we got to this point where Europe's on the verge of collapse in France is because of people like Macron, like Francois Holland, and he's frankly far worse than 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 Holland was. So I think we're the ECB is on the same money printing. It's been you know given a a brand new mandate on money printing and, and hyperinflation, and I think it won't be long before just like the Trumpflation meme has died, the uh, Macronflation meme will die in France. Yeah, well, this guy is a total joker, a lightweight in every sense of the word. He's a composite candidate who was kind of just created out of whole cloth to stop Le Pen. The guy is just a liar. They caught him with foreign bank accounts that he said he didn't have. The guy, I won't even get into his romantic past. That doesn't really have any place. It's just an indicator of who this person is. And, you know, in six months, they're going to be doing, trying to figure out how to get rid of him, too. Yeah, he definitely was created for the, for beating her. But, you know, when it comes down to it, I think people, it was kind of like the Swiss referendum. They kind of terrorized the public and made them think, look, if you vote to save our Swiss gold and, you know, you make us have to buy gold, it's going to it's going to cause markets to crash and we're not going to be able to maintain our peg with the euro, which, of course, they got rid of three weeks later. Yeah. Um, and it was the same thing here. They I mean. It would have been a Brexit times 100 result. The markets would have crashed. Gold would have exploded. That would have been the end of the gold cartel. And and all hell would have broken loose. And I think the people... I remember what it's not 65 percent of the people that voted for for Macron. It's 65 percent of the voters. Yeah. So you know, most of the people didn't even show up. But uh, I think the ones that did were scared. They were scared that uh, you know it's not like Marine Le Pen is is is, is Joan of Arc, and they were scared of what would have happened if she she uh, she was elected. And so they voted for this this complete nobody who's going to be more of the same. And the problem is, you know, I mean, Holland is the had the lowest approval rating in French presidential history. He's the only one to probably the only one in any any Western country to ever not run for reelection because he was so unpopular. And uh, that's that's the state France is in right now. And this guy, all his credentials were as he was the, you know, the economic minister for two years under this guy uh, at ages 36 and 37. So now he's thrown into this mess. He has no plan. He's just it's just going to be more of the same for France. France's economy will collapse. The, 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 the immigration will continue, the social unrest and all the other issues, um, you know, that are going on in, in Western Europe. And most importantly, if you're in the precious metals realm, it gives the ECB the, you know, the full bore mandate to continue doing what it's doing. I mean, right now we're we're at an all time high. I mean, it's funny because they talk about the, oh, the Fed and their their tightening policy, et cetera. And you know, the Fed is still under. They haven't they haven't reduced their balance sheet one penny, and they're still under one percent their interest rate. But globally, the amount of QE is two hundred and fifty billion dollars a month right now. It's the highest it's ever been. And uh, and with the economy falling apart, and now commodities are falling, and the Chinese credit bubble is falling apart, and you know we're zero GDP. It's only a matter of time before, as I call it, the most overdue financial crisis in history arrives. Yeah, and arrive it will. Right. There's nothing uh, to stop it here that I can see. Yeah. All that's stopping it right now is, and you know, especially, you, you know, you read my last two articles, the one that that Le Pen and Macron thing was eight pages long. And the one yesterday I wrote was about five pages long. And I'm just showing I'm like, look, the central banks are telling you we are buying up the stock market and the bond markets and the oil markets. We are we have nothing left. We are just printing money and uh, we're not even reporting most of it. We're just buying up every asset market uh, with with. Uh, that we can to just hold the things together because 
in the political realm, the geopolitical realm, the economic realm, the monetary realm, and everything's falling apart. It's like, you know, the euro. Remember, I've been saying all along about how the euro is going to collapse. And, you know, they, they had, there was a trade going on for a while. Oh, if Macron wins, it'll save the euro. No, it won't. The, the euro is falling now. And now that you're seeing uh, oil and other commodities falling, you're seeing the, um, you know, the commodity currencies are starting to plunge. I think the Canadian dollar, like, just hit multi multi year low the other day or yesterday and 73 i was there i was in vancouver yeah. and it was nice because stuff was getting cheaper while i was just standing there at the front desk of the hotel it was uh it hasn't happened to me i, I don't usually arbitrage my vacations uh, very well. <laughs> hey I, I arbitrage my gas purchases given my expert uh understanding of where oil prices are going yeah, <laughs> but uh, but you know, I mean, Canada is a perfect example. You know, you know, home home capital group, which is their countrywide uh, credit, is you know, any day it'll be gone. It's going to be a complete countrywide credit implosion. Their historic housing bubble and their the you know their economy is based on oil, uh, you know, oil revenues and the you know, oil prices are falling apart and and now the currency is down and you know this is just one of you know dozens of uh, of nations around the world that are facing all these same kind of problems. And uh, now that, you know, this election is passed and we can go back to the normal of the dollar strengthening because of liquidity fears around the world, especially in China, uh, where they're tightening up. the. I mean, right now, it's you, know, you see the Dow goes up every day. Meanwhile, the Chinese stock market, which is as controlled as any, has been falling like every day for the last three weeks. Commodities there are falling. The yuan is getting darn close to that seven point over the dollar again. No one's even watching it. And, you know, so, again, I mean, something's going to happen soon. Might even be bombing North Korea. I mean, who knows what it, it, it's going to be something and it's going to be soon because, you know, the Trumpflation honeymoon's over. The Macron honeymoon will be over within minutes because it's a net bad for France and all the other things in the world are just getting worse. Yeah, well, I think you're correct on that score. And it, definitely North Korea is looking like the confrontation du jour. But we've also got Syria and we've got Venezuela now. We've got troops or ships off of and, the coast of Venezuela. And, Afga and Afghanistan, I'm reading he yeah. wants to send more troops there. It's like, I mean, enough already. We, really? Yeah. we, we got to send troops. we got to send the army everywhere. Can't and you, th you think about what a screwed up world it is that, that the president of the United States or all these other countries gets to be the commander in chief. I mean, can you imagine... We have Donald Trump is, is in charge of the military or before him, Barack Obama or George Bush. I mean, how insane is it that these are the people making decisions? And around the world, it's the same thing. A bunch of politicians, lawyers, businessmen. I mean, it's bad enough when military people make such decisions. But yeah. I mean, look what he's done already. Yeah, let's send our fleet to Korea and start a nuclear war. Let's just bomb Syria for fun. Hey, let's send more troops to Afghanistan. Let's go down off uh, uh, to Venezuela and South Korea and everywhere. This is fun. This is like risk. This is like Stratego. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I remember that game. Yeah, I spent hours at it. Little did I know uh, our foreign policy would once resemble the game. But, you know, we get into the across the board plunge in U.S. economic data. Pretty much all numbers are down. Car sales, Real estate sales, you name it, mortgages, all down. Oh, it's just, it's just incredible. You know, the Fed comes out and says, "Now we're going to have four and a half percent GDP growth in the second quarter." And go, what, what? You said we're going to have three and a half percent growth last quarter. We had, and then you got down to point two, and that'll be revised lower. In last year, you said it would be four percent, and it wound up being one and a half percent. And now you can have four and a half percent. And it's like, I mean, just shut up already. I see again. This is the the cough medicine kicking in. I just you, you talk. They talk about all these, even the soft data. They talk about the soft data, all this record confidence that's out there. And I'm going, but Gallup just put out a poll that said that this is the lowest uh, economic confidence since the election. And then there was another one that came out yesterday that said household spending plans are at the lowest in four years. More importantly, actual retail sales have been falling off a cliff. Uh, car sales plateaued, you know, in Ford's words, six or nine months ago, and mm -hmm. inventories are at all time high. And yet we're told everything's going to get better. And I just don't get it. More importantly, it's going to be because of Trump's policies, but he hasn't done anything because he can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And um, not that those things that he wants to do are going to do much anyway, but it's, uh, like, again, people, you know, today's article is called It's All About Reality, because let's face it, when you're talking about financial markets, no, no more. There's no more financial markets. There's no more economic data. There's no more news. 
fake news. I mean, you, you have to just see for yourself what's going on around you. And, uh, and now, I mean, I don't even know that anyone really is looking at the Dow anymore because so many people lost their shirts between 2000 and 2008. It's only the handful, the 1%, the less than 1% that got all the free money yep. that's, uh, that's that benefiting from this. And the rest of us are struggling. And, uh, and uh, the, you know, when they try to hold down safe haven assets, um, you know, they buy themselves a little time. But to, to what end? Because ultimately, you know, what's happening in Bitcoin right now, which is far, it's almost impossible to manipulate other than like by jawboning and capital controls, which ultimately they can't control, is what's going to happen in precious metals. And really any other thing that people, when people start to fear the currencies uh, collapsing, which they will, they're going to race out and try to do, do anything they can to protect themselves, their assets, because we are in, as I wrote last week, we are in dot-com valuations in a Great Depression era. And unfortunately, that Great Depression uh, is going to get a lot worse because we have to repay the debt. And right now it's parabolically rising at record low interest rates, I might add. So look, people, you know, you got to do something now if you haven't already, because uh, the end game is here. And uh, elections in France don't mean a thing. Nothing means a thing except the debt, which which has to be repaid and, and can't. Yep. The debt uh, is never going to be repaid. It's going to be repudiated one way or the other. We've said that many, many a time. And now we're, we're also looking at metals. Uh, like you said, end game here. What's uh, what's with silver? Well, look, the, you know, I've been, we, we look at the, the COT report, right? You know, the comic stuff. And, you know, you have to take it with a grain of salt because everything the government publishes is a lie. But, you know, I mean, there's a, a mosaic that gets built here of what's going on. And, you know, the, the inventories are down to essentially their all time low. It's like you know, half a billion dollars worth of actual silver inventory there. And, you know, as I showed yesterday, every day, it's been you know, for years and years, the prices are up in China where all the actual demand is, and then they fall in the paper markets here. But the paper markets are becoming more discredited with each passing day. And, you know, what you've seen this year is unlike anything before because, you know, the data doesn't lie. I, I, I've been keeping track of the, the COD data on a weekly basis for 15 years, going back, you know, I've dated 30 years. And this is by far, not even close, by far the biggest COMEX commercial short position in history. And yeah. uh, the only time it was even close was last year, right after the Brexit, when they had an actual reason to try to slow the rise. But here you've seen this, I don't want to say parabolic surge, but it's pretty close to a parabolic surge in speculative buying of paper silver, which has been offset by a, a equally uh, huge record setting naked short position because they're basically. So when people tell you that, no one wants silver. It's uh, it's not a you know precious metals are outdated and and uh, everything's cool. No, they're buying more than ever. They're stupid for doing it on the comics as if they they can't learn the lesson. But the point is, there's record demand for silver right now, and in the physical markets in the western in the eastern worlds where the the currency is crashing, people are buying it hand over fist. Uh, so all that's really left is uh, you know how long can you? I mean, how much naked shorting can you pile on of 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 uh, with silver that doesn't exist? How much longer before people get scared, before there's a crisis and people actually want silver like they did in 2008, like they did in 2011, 2013. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's going, there's going to be a run on the actual metal at some point. We've had many before. And, uh, you know, the, to, to think that all that's going on in the world, we haven't had any kind of crisis at all mm. because of all this market manipulation that has taken us to these dot com valuations in a Great Depression era. It's coming. And when it does, it's going to be a major shortage. And it's not going to be like 2008 where they could reverse it with lots of money printing. This time around, the, you know, the silver will go and the, and the gold will go, you know, no offer. And uh, it's kind of like Bitcoin, you know, saying you know, the, the Chinese they instituted capital controls on the Bitcoin exchanges because they were scared. That people were going to use it as a means of, of uh, you know, fleeing the country, capital flight and and uh, getting out of the yuan. And what did people do? They just bought in other places. They bought in the black market. And uh, so the price is soared. And it's the same kind of thing here. Eventually, these, you know, the government's going to lose control of these kind of decentralized commodities, be it Bitcoin or gold or silver. And uh, and that's how people are going to store their value, because they're going to be scared of, uh, of, the, of these ridiculous financial assets being so overvalued even you know yeah no doubt you can see it coming here yeah bitcoin at 1800 who would have thunk huh yeah 
Yeah, well, I mean, it's a, it's a changing paradigm. The world is changing in a hurry. And uh, it won't be long before something causes the all-out collapse in in, uh, in confidence in fiat currencies. That you know, it's been ongoing for years, but you know, the big one is coming, and it's going to be here soon. Yeah, I think you are correct. And hey, the the VIX, uh, look at that record low volatility and fear. You know, that should tell you something, right? It should tell you that markets have never been more rigged. Yeah. And it's just, it's astounding to me. I mean, like, again, these last two days articles, eight pages was one and five. And I'm just going, look, here's the Swiss telling you, you know, it's like the top five stocks uh, in the NASDAQ, you know, Facebook and Apple, Mm. Google, Microsoft, and uh, I forgot what the fifth one is. I don't don't know. But the point is that that's like 40% of the gains in the NASDAQ when they tell you the NASDAQ's doing so great because it's market capitalization weighted. Right. And, you know, you see that Swiss, Bank of Switzerland is telling you we bought 90 billion of U.S. stocks in the last two years and like 20 billion in the last three quarters in the last three months. And yeah. our biggest three holdings, our biggest five holdings are these five stocks. So <laughs> basically saying, yeah, we are buying the stock market uh, and yeah. Japan is buying the stock market. And of course, the, the, the Fed is buying the stock market. That's what the dead ringer algorithm is. You know, when they buy it, when every day the Dow bottoms at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is their open market operations. And, you know, it's kind of the point where there's no pretense anymore. It's just 100 percent ring the markets uh, because they, they they know that that's the only way to keep the game going at all. And, uh, and you know, economic mother nature always wins, particularly in physical markets like oil, where the glut is, sh- is shining through right now and precious metals where production is in free fall. So, you know, I mean, they'll lose. And then you got, you know, you got the, you know, things like Bitcoin, which will come in and, and help destroy the, uh, yeah, destroy the, I call it Bitcoin and precious metal, the twin destroyers of fiat regime, because the governments won't be able to stop it. And um, because it's decentralized. So, again, you know, there's all the attack vectors that are coming in on the powers that be politically, geopolitically, monetarily, economically, socially are all working together to, you know, to destroy what 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 must mathematically be destroyed. And with seven and a half billion people participating, you know, it's going to happen in many places. It already has. And where it hasn't, it will. Yeah. And I think we will leave it at that. So go. We'll give you a break now, Andy. Go check out uh, Andy's work over at milesfranklin.com. Sign up for his daily newsletter and frequent audio blogs. Check us out on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. We've been officially designated, Andy, fake news. Uh, Oh, really? By who? I have no idea, but I got a thing from a guy who's obviously not a listener, and he's got a list. I'm going to send you the link. I'm going to publish it in this week's newsletter with roughly a thousand sites that have been determined mostly to be fake news by some college professor or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the woman in uh, the Northeast, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think she got Liberty Blitzkrieg, too, and Zero Edge. She didn't get Miles Franklin, though. <laughs> oh, well, hey. Uh, but she said that we are unreliable and that we are, uh, what else did they say? We're unreliable. I don't know what that means. And we have bias. Now, look, as far as reliability goes, I've been doing this pretty consistently for six years putting out podcast after podcast, and uh, our webmaster, Stefan, never misses a day. So I don't know, like we're reposting other people's work. So we're getting, I, I don't get the whole thing. Jerry, you're very unreliable. Come on, let's face Yeah, like, yeah, that's what my ex says also. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, the other thing is that this listener who will just go by the name, the initials JM, tells me that I'm anti-science. And why do you think I'm anti-science, Andy? I mean, well, obviously, you know, this person is, is you know, putting together like 100 sites and making a generalization. But that's that's kind of a <laughs> this is the this is the person who forwarded me this list. He said, I'm, uh-huh. un, I'm anti-science. Why? Because I question the existence of man-made climate change um, being the primary reasons for our climate changing, and that's why I'm anti-science. All right. Wait. Because so I you have you have to be you have to support you know climate change theory to be to be worthy of the news. Yeah, to be worthy of science, according to this guy. Mm. Be, you have to accept the orthodoxy, the line. And you know what this thing is all about. It's all about control, getting more money, taxes, 
of controlling the populace. Because as we found out, I said, well, what about the climate gate emails? And it's like, well, six separate investigations said that they're okay. I said, did you read those climate gate emails where they specifically talk about manipulating the data, changing the data, that the hockey stick doesn't work? He never addresses that. said, you know, we've got that. We've got this guy who was in the... uh, NOAA, who said uh, he just left, that he was forced to manipulate data. He said, but the reports are accurate. I said, well, if your report's based on fraudulent data or deliberately false data that you've you've uh, accumulated and put together over time, how can uh, how can the premise be proven correct? But he never addresses that. It's always you know, some nonsense. So, well, look, the world is, you know, without, don't get too wrapped up. Just no. you should be honored to be con- to be considered a, a fake news site. And you know, the people that are making this stuff up are uh-huh. lunatics. I mean, yeah. the absolute so, you know, craziness. Lunatics absolute is the best word. Absolute, yeah, absolute craziness. And I don't know if Google's going to take this and run with it. I don't really care. Uh, we don't really need. Google, our audience expands on its own without any uh, Google manipulation or attempt to uh, make Google carry us higher up or whatever. So, hey, thought you'd like to know that you were just talking to fake news. (laughs) Yes, I guess I am, too. Yeah, well, hey, welcome to the club. It's very exclusive, Andy. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm glad I made it through this. I got one more. All right. This is this is Andy on drugs. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, feel better, Andy. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks very much. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today's May 10th, 2017. Well, the French election results are in. Did the good guys win or were there no good guys? Andrew Hoffman is with us now in somewhat modified form. Andy, uh, good morning. Hope you're feeling okay. Yes, thank you, Kerry. I, I, uh, I'm on a lot of uh, cough medicines because I have pneumonia right now, so I'm going to try to avoid having a coughing attack. But yes, as for the French election, uh, the article I wrote on Monday, which is eight pages long, a must read, was called, Who's Better for Precious Metals, Macron or Le Pen? And obviously the short term answer would be Le Pen. But the fact is, the, the reason we got to this point where Europe's on the verge of collapse in France is because of people like Macron, like Francois Holland. And he's frankly far worse than 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 Holland was. So I think where the ECB is on the same money printing, it's been you know given a, a brand new mandate on money printing and, and hyperinflation. And I think it won't be long before just like the Trumpflation meme has died, the uh, Macronflation meme will die in France. You know, this guy is a total joker, a lightweight in every sense of the word. He's a composite candidate who was kind of just created out of whole cloth to stop Le Pen. The guy is just a liar. They caught him with foreign bank accounts that he said he didn't have. The guy, I won't even get into his romantic past. That doesn't really have any place. It's just an indicator of who this person is. And, you know, in six months, they're going to be doing trying to figure out how to get rid of him too yeah he definitely was created for the for beating her but you know when it comes down to it i think people it was kind of like the swiss referendum they kind of terrorized the public and made them think look if you vote to save our swiss gold and you know you make us have to buy gold it's gonna it's gonna cause markets to crash and we're not going to be able to maintain our peg with the euro which of course they got rid of three weeks later yeah um and it was the same thing here they i mean it would have been a Brexit times 100 result. The markets would have crashed. Gold would have exploded. That would have been the end of the gold cartel and, and all hell would have broken loose. And I think the people 
I remember what it's not sixty five percent of the people that voted for for Macron. It's sixty five percent of the voters. Yeah. So you know, most of the people didn't even show up. But uh, I think the ones that did were scared. They were scared that uh, you know it's not like Marine Le Pen is is is, is Joan of Arc, and they were scared of what would have happened if she she uh, she was elected. And so they voted for this this complete nobody who's going to be more of the same. And the problem is, you know, I mean, Holland is the had the lowest approval rating in French presidential history. It is the only one to the bond markets and the oil markets. We are we have nothing left. We are just printing money and uh, we're not even reporting most of it. We're just buying up every asset market uh, with, with uh, that we can to just hold the things together. Because in the political realm, the geopolitical realm, the economic realm, the monetary realm, everything's falling apart. It's like, you know, the euro. Remember, I've been saying all along about how the euro is going to collapse. And, you know, they, they had, there was a trade going on for a while. Oh, if Macron wins, it'll save the euro. No, it won't. The, the euro is falling now. And now that you're seeing uh, oil and other commodities falling, you're seeing the, um, you know, the commodity currencies are starting to plunge. I think the Canadian dollar, like, just hit multi multi year low the other day or yesterday. Right. And- 73. I was there. I was in Vancouver yeah. and it was nice because stuff was getting cheaper while I was just standing there at the front desk of the hotel. It was, uh, it hasn't happened to me. I, I don't usually arbitrage my vacations. Uh, very well. <laughs> hey, I, I arbitrage my gas purchases given my expert uh, understanding of where oil prices are coming. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but you know, I mean, Canada is a perfect example. You know, you know, home home capital group, which is their countrywide oh. credit, is you know, any day it'll be gone. It's going to be a complete countrywide credit implosion. Their historic housing bubble and their. The, you know, their economy is based on oil, uh, you know, oil revenues and you know, oil prices are falling apart and and now the currency is down. And, you know, this is just one of you know dozens of, uh, of nations around the world that are facing all these same kind of probably the only one in any co- any Western country to ever not run for reelection because he was so unpopular. And uh, that's that's the state France is in right now. And this guy, all his credentials were as he was the, you know, the economic minister for two years under this guy uh, at ages 36 and 37. So now he's thrown into this mess. He has no plan. He's just it's just going to be more of the same for France. France's economy will collapse. The, 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 the immigration will continue, the social unrest and all the other issues, um, you know, that are going on in, in Western Europe. And most importantly, if you're in the precious metals realm, it gives the ECB the, you know, the full bore mandate to continue doing what it's doing. I mean, right now we're we're at an all time high. I mean, it's funny because they talk about the, oh, the Fed and their their tightening policy, et cetera. And you know, the Fed is still under. They haven't they haven't reduced their balance sheet one penny, and they're still under one percent their interest rate. But globally, the amount of QE is two hundred and fifty billion dollars a month right now. It's the highest it's ever been. And uh, and with the economy falling apart, and now commodities are falling, and the Chinese credit bubble is falling apart, and you know we're zero GDP. It's only a matter of time before, as I call it, the most overdue financial crisis in history arrives. Yeah, and arrive it will. Right. There's nothing uh, to stop it here that I can see. Yeah. All that's stopping it right now is, and you know, especially, you, you know, you read my last two articles, the one that that Le Pen and Macron thing was eight pages long. And the one yesterday I wrote was about five pages long. And I'm just showing I'm like, look, the central banks are telling you we are buying up the stock market and problems. And uh, now that, you know, this election is passed and we can go back to the normal of the dollar strengthening because of liquidity fears around the world, especially in China, uh, where they're tight. Up the I mean, right now, it's you, know, you see the Dow goes up every day. Meanwhile, the Chinese stock market, which is as controlled as any, has been falling like every day for the last three weeks. Commodities there are falling. The yuan is getting darn close to that seven point over the dollar again. No one's even watching it, and you know. So again, I mean, something's going to happen soon. Might even be bombing North Korea. I mean, who knows what? It, it, it's going to be something, and it's going to be soon because you know the Trumpflation honeymoon's over. The Macron honeymoon will be over within minutes because it's a net bad for France and all the other things in the world are just getting worse. Yeah, well, I think you're correct on that score. And definitely North Korea is looking like the confrontation du jour. But we've also got Syria and we've got Venezuela now. We've got troops or ships off of and, the coast of Venezuela. And, Afga- and Afghanistan. I'm reading he yeah. wants to send more troops there. It's like, I mean, enough already. We, really? Yeah. we, we got to send troops. we got to send the army everywhere. Can't and you, th- you think about what a screwed up world it is that, that the president of the United States or all these other countries gets to be the commander in chief. I mean, can you imagine 
we have Donald Trump is, is in charge of the military or before him, Barack Obama or George Bush. I mean, how insane is it that these are the people making decisions and around the world? It's the same thing. A bunch of 